Good morning, YouTube. Since our last update, which was really long, <laughs> I decided maybe I should start a new update, but I'm kind of curious to uh, how many people hate that long format. Uh, I got a lot of people that say that uh, they just turn it on and just listen, which is fine. I don't think that I show very much a lot of times. I am talking a lot, so let me turn you around. This, the, I, I'm learning little by little, um, even though I like to explain out everything that's going on, that um, there is a part to video that is supposed to be more show than tell. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. And that's evident that a lot of that stuff works really well for people because you actually have uh, channels that all they do is um, that ASMR stuff. I mean, they don't even talk on the video. Can you believe that? That's like sacrilege. <laughs> I, I just have my way of doing things. And they have their, word, their way of doing things. Um, the other day, um, my son says, hey, I want to go to the park. Do you have an umbrella? I said, yeah, I got an umbrella. And he said, hey, your truck was wet where I got the umbrella at. Well, it's all dried up now, but it rained so hard. Um, I think I have pictures of the yard, how flooded it was. Uh, the basement did not flood, which I may even put that on video. I don't remember, um, but I had to move this up. I got to redo this again. I want to sweep behind here at some point. That's not what's going on today, though. Um, today is something that you guys can see if you want to, but I want to start the truck. <clears throat> yeah, you guys can definitely see if you want to because it's going to be review day. Wow, look at the grass, how tall it is. It looks horrible. Hey, uh, I can't, I can't mow though. It's, there's still standing water in that pit back there. All right, everybody knows the story. If I forget to mute it during the editing, so be it, but I'm warning you. Alexa, <coughs> turn on garage light. So I was kidding around with Heidi and I said, I gave her pictures. I sent her pictures. This is all the stuff from behind the truck. And I said, uh, hey, um, next time that I say I want to buy some ratchet straps, uh, hit me upside the head. <laughs> because I have all these, and I still have some over here um, in this bag and in the box and stuff. I mean, hell, there's some up here, too. So uh, the these here were ratchet straps that we had on the back of the fifth wheel to hold uh, the bikes down when we got the fifth wheel um, and it worked fine for the one bike that we had on the back of the fifth wheel uh, the other one was in the pass-through was Heidi's folding bike um, once we got two bikes though I went out and bought another set of those exact same ones these rhinos they have you know what I can't even find them now oh yeah here we go they have these really nice tie down things that go with it I, I don't even see all those I wonder where all those are uh, they're somewhere obviously as Heidi says when I'm looking for stuff I said where is such and such and she, she always gives me the answer of well it's somewhere <laughs> and I always give her the business about that uh, man I love that me and her are on the same page with stuff <laughs> but uh, of course it's somewhere yeah here's one uh, here's another maybe I'm, I'm I I've, I've misplaced them. Yeah, here's another one. <clears throat> I don't know if I have I Should have a couple more of these somewhere Again, they're somewhere. I use these to hold down the zero turn when I went and picked it up at the the mower dealership. I Don't know where I got them though. I might have bought them like an idiot but that doesn't explain still all these ratchet straps. I had this blue set, brand new in a package, 
from some kind of a sale that I was somewhere and I'm like, oh, those things are too cheap. I, I have to have at least uh, the uh, one, you know, I'll have one set that it's kind of disposable. It's so cheap. Well, I was using this and you can see how it's kind of faded here maybe. I was using this to put out on the, the poles on the fence and keep the gate from sagging. That's why that, those are in existence. The red ones I've had, there's some parts of that red one I had forever. And there's some orange ones in there I've had. And on our zero, uh, zero turn, on our fifth wheel, um, the blue boy that's hanging up there, that big blue monster that's in the corner now, just kind of standing up, was held on the underside of our RV with those straps. I just put them in an X motion or an X across them and it held that it held it up beautifully except uh, which uh, you guys have been watching for a while there was a time that it actually came loose. Yeah it's hanging kind of low there. It caught that axle and popped it out of its socket. Maybe we should pull the whole thing out. What do you think? Possible. We have to do that. So, here's what happened was whenever it got hit by that piece of tread at 70 miles an hour, yeah, it bent the rim and uh, it pulled it out of its axle spot, which that, I'm pretty sure it just pops back in again there. So it looks like that it's kind of wanting to go back on. It's fixed. Let's get still bent. Look at it. Wobble, wobble, wobble. He'll still do the job. It's back up. I think it's actually back up tighter than what it was before. Um, it moved around a little bit. I was kind of surprised by that. I think it was a piece of uh, 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 gator. They call it gator. The truckers call them gators, uh, but a uh, piece of tire tread uh, that was uh, come off a truck. I, I'm pretty sure that's what I ran over. A big piece of rubber, and, and the tank actually showed a big rubber scuff mark on it. Um, and I don't even know how I saw it. I, I really don't remember how it all worked that I figured I better look. Or, but nonetheless, I repositioned the tank, I tightened the ratchet straps in a different way, and it was okay. Look, I even have ratchet straps over here. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. Uh, the reason that um, all this stuff is laid out, because some of the boxes were wet, just like uh, my son had said, some of the stuff was wet. I found it, um, <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys. Yeah, here's four, all four straps. Yeah, like you guys care. What the hell is it showing me straps for? I don't care about straps. I want to tell you though that if I had to do it all over again, um, I would have just bought these. Uh, Strapino, Strapino, Strap in, no. <laughs> I did a review on this and I should have talked about these so much more other than just the one review because I've used these a lot. There's there's two different ones, You get two different kits you can buy. Uh, as of when I did the, the review, I haven't looked since then, but uh, you have four of these, right? They're they're a little bit shorter ones. Four of these, and or you can get a kit that has two of these. I think these are called the large ones. Oh man, I wish all my ratchet straps were these. Uh, reason being is you see this mess, right? Look at look at I've got them, I've got them like tied off so they don't flap in the breeze. All that stuff goes to the wayside with these. So you can see, look, so you hook up your strap, you know, you can hook up this side first if you want, and then pull the strap to where you need it. Once it's where it needs to be, which you can see these are pretty long. Right. Anyways, you just, and that's it. You just start ratcheting it and that's, you're, you're finished. It's, you can see, it, 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 it's, that's all. But when you get done with it, I mean, you know where this is going. Again, sorry, one hand. You just open it up all the way and it stores itself. I mean, this, this seems like something that should have been 
all along, right? Uh, Strapino, that's the name of the company. Man, I've got a lot of work to do. How many of you are watching this right now and are slowly realizing what I'm, or, or probably have already realized what I'm slowly realizing, and that is I'm cluttering up this garage just like I did our old one. <laughs> I mean, it's slowly getting cluttered. I, I don't know. Um, that discussion, you know, we just had that out quite a bit, and, and this is a, a reoccurring thing. I didn't have to keep on discussing on what we want to do with this house and how long we want to stay in the area. So we've actually shot for what potentially could be a forever home um, that would allow us to um, establish ourselves. You know, it's really hard, like, for example, anything for that matter um, if you're trying to plan our like for example my truck I don't plan on keeping this truck all the time I bought this truck for one reason and one reason only and that was to replace the truck that I sold uh, when we got rid of the fifth wheel and I needed something to move stuff from our storage unit into this house and whatever I may end up buying uh, for the home uh, a zero turn that needed pulled by trailer uh, bigger stuff that we bought, you know, uh, 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 um, an edger, uh, lawn mowers, um, snow blowers. Uh, we've moved furniture in here. We bought furniture for Heidi. Lots of stuff that we've done. So we needed a truck, and we got a truck. But this truck was kind of like a same thing as the house. It's not my forever truck. It's not even my oh I can't. I'm going to try to keep this for the next five year truck. This was a truck that we were going to buy and just use. Now, coming into summer, I have to worry about this not having air conditioning because I'm a big baby when it comes to that. Um, I like the warm weather, except when I'm needing to work, drive something, and I'm hot. When I was a kid living in Florida, we didn't have air conditioning in any of our cars until 75, I think. 1975 was the first time that we had a car with air conditioning. Now at that point in time, I was uh, nine years old, eight years old, nine years old. Uh, I mean, our house, we didn't even have air conditioning. We didn't have air conditioning until I was in our house until I think I was probably six, um, maybe seven. I think it was seven now I think about it. And it, you know, I, I'm used to it. It's Florida, it's the summer and it's hot, I get it. But we just dealt with it. We had old cars and we just rolled down the windows. Um, but I've become a big baby when it comes to that as far as driving, especially if I go to any kind of a distance. We bought the truck. I knew the air conditioning didn't work. No big deal. Um, I knew that if I filled the gas tank to its top that it leaked. Uh, no big deal. I just, you know, the, the, unfortunately the gauge isn't very accurate, so I got to kind of play around with that too. Getting to where we're at now, I just need to sell the truck. Same with the house. We know there's a lot more stuff that we want to do to the house, but if this isn't our forever home, all we want to do is prepare it um, in a way that makes it resellable. It doesn't personalize it for us. I mean, if we had our way, we would completely redo the basement, uh, put in different flooring. Um, we would also um, redo it to where that bathroom downstairs is a fully functioning, 100% uh, go into a room, close the door behind you, a heated cooled bathroom and then as far as throughout the house we would put which we'll probably do anyways put a new roof on it um, we would change the closets and make them a little bit more usable um, when we redo the bathroom we would redo it in a manner that works more for us uh, we talked about the walk-in bathroom versus or walk-in shower versus having a bathtub um, again uh, the, the driveway out here, the driveway, that's that's a big thing out here. We would um, uh, have more asphalt, concrete, gravel, something put in here uh, to allow for us to park more easily than what we currently are. And I mean, there's a, like I said, there's just a lot of things we would do. But if we're not staying here, I'm not changing the driveway configuration and bringing in, you know, all this gravel and that for somebody to move in with um, just two cars. We're just trying to figure out what we want to do and how far we want to go with something. So what do you guys think? What do you think that would be uh, 
best for us. Um, Heidi plans on staying at her job for at least another, oh, I don't know, two to three years. Um, if we bought a house in the area, um, that would make her position extend greatly um, to where she would probably have to stay there another eight to 10 years. Um, <clears throat> at that point in time, she's into retirement, getting close to retirement. Heidi's younger than I am, if you guys don't know that. Um, she is four years younger than me, so I'll be retiring roughly four years before her, um, or at least starting to collect uh, some sort of Social Security for all the years that I worked in my earlier years uh, at a normal nine to five desk job. Uh, but as far as Heidi, um, you know, she has four more years after that. And we have always said neither one of us really ever plan on not working. But we did learn a valuable lesson by going out and trying to be retired um, prior to us being retirement age. Um, and that was, uh, it, it hurt our health and it hurt our, our inner core being. Uh, we, we are, even though Heidi's much more than me, I, I like to do projects. I like to, to, to get involved with stuff. You know, I like to fix things. Um, I like that. And when I hit, when we hit the road, I basically was not able to do that except for whatever projects were going on with the RV. And you guys saw that. I, I was like buying stuff to have projects to do. You know, the, the roll top uh, for the, the truck, um, the, for the cap, putting in the fifth wheel hitch, um, getting uh, um, stuff for the truck and installing the airbags on the truck. Um, and then of course, having somebody install the airbags that I had to fix because they didn't know what they were doing. And then, um, you know, hitch, changing the hitch around for the, the travel trailer. Um, doing projects on the travel trailer for that um, ProPride system, putting different lift jacks on, um, ju just little things uh, like that. And then when we got into the fifth wheel, you know, project after project, switching that door around, um, putting the uh, transform, the automatic Ch uh, changeover switch uh, for a plug on the front of the RV, um, rigging up a generator with an exhaust for the back of the truck. I mean, I, I, it was like I, I was making all this work for myself because I was wanting to do that. It was a big lesson for us when we came back um, and realized how much work we missed doing uh, while we were on the road. So one of those you know old sayings of be careful what you wish for well a lot of people wish that hey I didn't have to go to work I wish I could just kick back and watch TV all day um, I wish I didn't have to mow the lawn I wish I didn't have to worry about um, utilities on the house and home repairs and stuff like that uh, you'd be surprised that once you're out there uh, how much you would actually miss that on some level if you're kind of that type of person don't get me wrong there's people out there that really don't want to do anything they really want to get up in the morning and plop in front of the couch you know tv and the couch and just watch tv all day um there's people out there like that but heidi and i we're, we're just not that so that's why the winter hurts me so bad here that's why i hate ohio so much so heidi and i discussed it and i told her i don't have any problem staying in ohio but we would have to be in a situation that um like this area here would have to become all shop uh, all the power equipment pointing to all this stuff over here all that stuff needs to go in the barbecue grill needs to go into a shed that stays away from the shop and then the shop becomes 100 percent a shop that gets used as a shop and of course some sort of studio as you can see the camera stand and stuff here too um i don't i don't know if we want to go to that extent here uh, and, and the thing is, is if we were down south, um, a lot of that is like not a big deal. Like today, now that the weather's nice, I get to shoot video out here, but I got to get to work. So we'll pick this up another time.
All right, guys, so here we are right in the middle of it. There's a solar flare that you can see up there, which is kind of odd, but um, you can actually see the stars are out. You can see where there's sun still shining over in that area and over in that area. Um, but man, it's, it's an eerie feeling. It really is. Yep, it's coming. It's already coming out again. It's already starting. You can already see on the ground. Hello, YouTube. Hear the beeping going on? I gotta shut that off. Yes. Yes, yes, we have a landmark deal that's going on. What's the landmark deal? Today is going to be 74, I think. I think it's 74. What's that mean overall? You guys are never going to guess it. Something that happened all the time that hardly happens at all now. I got to wear shorts. <laughs> I got to wear shorts. <laughs> I get to wear one of my uh, lighter, lighter ja uh, shirts. Everybody hold their ears. I'll try to mute it. I'll turn on garage light. It's been a long time coming. My legs are white. Um, so how did the winter treat us overall? Because I consider this almost like winter's over. Just because it says that it should be spring on the calendar. We're in Northeast Ohio. That don't mean it's spring. It could still be winter. <laughs> but I consider this to be like really spring. Um, so what did winter treat us like? Well, the good news is, I can't believe it, but now that springtime has hit, I am actually... Um, less weight than I was before. Isn't that... But, hold on. Just, uh, really? Okay, this just then. Uh, no, I gained 20 pounds. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> what a surprise. I'm shocked. Uh, let's spin you around here. So we got mowers that are firing up out there. People are mowing their yard. Heidi uh, decided to mow the front yard yesterday with our push mower. Um, because the weather is the way that it is, um, I'm going to go ahead and get the hose out. Um, I checked the forecast and I don't see any freezing temperatures uh, for the next 10 days. Um, I still have a little bit of work to do. Uh, we just did, uh, sh just shot uh, a lot of the footage for the review on this. I gotta turn that off or we're gonna hear that all the whole time. Boom. Must be Heidi going to lunch because it says the the door to the Kia is unlocked <laughs> or has is it became unlocked and it's just her when she goes in and out of it so uh, Heidi's at work as you can imagine like I said she's at lunch uh, but we just did uh, co covered some of the footage of this the other day on camera uh, for this uh, bike build um, more importantly the review um, I still have uh, two more bikes I have to build, one more bike I have to do a review on, uh, then I have to, we have to go out somewhere and, uh, get shots of these, like 50 shots per bike, uh, to submit to the, uh, manufacturer. Um, I have to do a review on this here. Uh, this is really cool. It's a, a standalone gazebo, but it's also, um, something else. What's, what else is it? Standalone Ezebo. Oh, it hooks to the back of an SUV. That's the other thing. But yeah, we've got uh, we, we've got the sounds of summer going on. How nice is that? I'm gonna walk through the yard real quick. Well, I'm gonna attempt to walk through the yard. I don't think I'm gonna be able to because um, it might be too wet still. I can still see the dew on the grass, and I mean it's it's noon. So one thing I, I never really cared for in this state I mean it could be nice weather out and still you've got a lot of wet yeah 
this is all this is all muddy this lawn needs rolled bad I mean really really bad I can feel it underneath my feet it's so ripe for that right now I think it's my neighbor across the street It'd be nice to see him out uh, he's in his 80s yeah it's Reuben and I think there were some health issues over there because we've seen an ambulance uh, transport somebody the other day hey so it's good to see him out uh, again I've reiterated this before that's one of the things that kind of scares us about the neighborhood is when all these neighbors are gone who moves in and you guys may be thinking well who cares you know that's that shouldn't make much difference well unfortunately in this area um, we have a rash of people who can't necessarily afford homes but they can afford like section 8 rent or they can afford uh, government assistance rent or they can afford to rent or they just want to rent whatever maybe their credit won't allow them to buy and uh, what happens is these companies come in and they buy these places that are structurally sound nothing wrong with them and they rehab the inside and update them and then they sell them to people who want to rent them or they start renting them themselves and right now like I said uh, the gentleman over here is 70 something maybe 74 ish the guy that's on the corner um, he I don't know what the deal is there but he's in his 70s for sure and then I think she's in her 80s he's in his 80s she's in her 80s the next lady in her 80s and uh, I don't know the, this house back here is empty uh, that white house over there is empty and this house that is kind of our backyard neighbor that house is empty um, all that could be a problem if somebody finds out about this neighborhood and comes in and starts scarfing up these homes dirt cheap um, I would suspect based on what I seen for the market value every one of these houses that I just talked about and pointed to uh, I don't think any of them would sell for more than 90,000 at the absolute most and I would think that they would be closer to the 70,000 range so you can get an idea if somebody has half a million dollars uh, they could buy up quite a few of these homes re you know have them refurbished or rehabbed uh, inside to update them and then they could rent them out and have you know all these rental properties hey now if the if the rental companies were really legit and they were vested in the neighborhood and actually cared about uh, the, the people that were coming in and you know renting from them that'd be one thing but they don't they just want a warm body that's making payments that's all they care about and as the house starts to get tore apart of course that's tax write-off for them you know those are repairs that they can write off on their taxes uh, so you know you get people that just destroy their area you know loud neighbors uh, people that's never owned a home before young people uh, that come in and think oh my god I got my own house I can throw a party every weekend now yeah this is awesome and I'm just past that <laughs> I mean I can understand you know ho you know parties on the holidays but um, not every weekend as you see here maybe on the table uh, yeah look at this how was that solar deal it was interesting I was that was a cool experience um, the next solar eclipse total solar eclipse um, will cross Florida it will cross Florida and I think it will cross in the year 2045 so if somehow I eke out uh, another um, what's that 21 years um, of course I'll be 70 ooh, I don't know eight I don't expect to live that long, but if I do, great. Um, hopefully my vision's still good, and I might actually be able to experience the solar eclipse. Somebody might actually put me in a wheelchair and wheel me out to see it. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've got to get some work done. But I wanted to say hi to everyone, 
and uh, this is what we're doing. And man, I, my mood definitely changes when it's nice weather out. Mm. Good morning, YouTube. So the other day I was doing one of my updates and I was just talking about, you know, everything, just like I normally do. It, it could be anything and everything. And in this case, I was talking about uh, tree management. <laughs> uh, so let me show you uh, that clip. We need to do something about those two trees. Um, they're kind of worthless. Quite honestly, I should just take chainsaw. Well, I don't have my son-in-law's chainsaw anymore. I should just take a chainsaw though and, and cut them. Yeah. Yeah, I could take one rope and wrap it around both of them and cut one tree, the one that's leaning, and instead of it falling, it would get caught up by the rope. Once I cut the leaning tree and it has fallen to a certain degree and gotten held up, by the rope well that, that could kick it the back the bottom end into the fence um, it would help with the second tree to fall down uh, I don't know I was talking about you know some of the smaller trees that I needed to uh, take care of and you know I was things that I needed to do well if you guys that follow us on Facebook which I suggest you do if you don't um, we do post stuff on Facebook occasionally. Uh, we, we've had a lot of rain and uh, we have wind. And I thought we pretty much took care of everything that we could. But there were some things that are just out of our control that's not ours. Apologize for the wind noise because there's still wind going on out here. Uh, we have a wind advisory. You can see here. Heidi had stood this up, she said, this morning. And apparently... Fell again. Good news is the basement not even close to flooding. Not even. I mean, we have a little bit of water coming in the foundation, but it's just moisture. Darn it! I hate that. Boom. All right. That's taken care of. Look at all these twigs. Can you believe this? These twigs actually hit our car look at all this These, the cars were clean some of it landed on the truck over here all from that <laughs> oh my god <laughs> can you believe it So these trees weren't on our property. Um, two of them that were on our property that I was talking about trimming, they got snapped off. So good news there, huh? Um, obviously, this is something that uh, homeowners insurance has to take care of. Well, we can't. We can't do this. I mean, it's actually unsafe in some of these places. Oy. So I push mode this the other day. Um, but with all the and the reason I push mode is because it was just so wet. <sighs> Sad. We've got a lot more work to do. Um, so obviously our fence has been compromised. And it's the neighbor's tree, but it, you know it's in Ohio law states that they have to have basically neglected the tree. Um, so in Ohio, what you do is if you have a neighbor whose trees are a problem, and I could have done it. If we would have paid attention, I could have done it. And what I mean is, um, all I had to do is notify the neighbor that um, there was a limb that fell down back here. And I, I included that in an older video uh, where a big limb fell off of this tree. 
Now at that point in time, all I had to do was contact who the neighbor was, find out who it was. It's this house back here that just sits empty. And send them a letter that says, hey, you need to take care of your tree because it could be a problem, you know. Um, it's overgrown or whatever. Well, at that point, the uh, neighbor would have been notified that there was a tree that was in need, you know, that was being neglected. And in that case, uh, when this happened, uh, we could have went after them and, you know, their insurance would have had taken care of this. But since we didn't, Ohio law states that um, it's kind of an act of God thing. So if there's any good news out of this, I guess these two trees that I was talking about needed removed are gone. Uh, the other thing is um, these trees now that they're going to be removed um, on some level is going to be something that will make it a lot easier for us to uh, have sunlight in our yard to help with the drying of this yard, keeping this yard dry. But now can you believe this? This was a big tree. This is a big thump. I don't know where our property line is. Um, if, if you guys remember, see how this fence, I don't know if you can tell, but this fence makes a turn there. Uh, the camera is really deceiving, but the fence is nice and straight from that corner all the way at the front of the property. But once it gets to be right about here, uh, one of these here, I can't tell on the camera monitor right now. The fence, instead of going straight, continuing straight to the edge of the property, along the edge of the property, and then cutting over as it does, because we don't own this lot behind us here, um, they decided not to avoid all those trees, and they just, uh, they just did this angle thing. Well, now that these trees are kind of removed, I think we're going to have to talk to the, the fence company and tell them, hey, is it, can you put it back, you know, put it maybe the way it is supposed to be, and that's straight. Of course, our fire pit needs replaced. Poor thing. It's not even a year old. It's, I don't know. I don't know how many months old it is. Good news is it barely clipped the uh, garage here, or, you know, it just threw some twigs, basically. Yeah, all this will have to be replaced. They, when we first moved in, uh, there was some limbs that hung over the fence because it had been, you know, not trimmed or anything for years. So we, you know, trimmed whatever limbs that came over on our side. Not, not very many, but still. And uh, yeah, they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to do some work here. Like I've always said, and Heidi says it too, it's always something. It could have been worse. That's why we took down that tree there. That tree would have definitely uh, fallen over on this part of the fence. Good thing the wind has a tendency to blow um, in the direction we're currently looking on the camera because these two trees are massive. They are huge. I mean, for this area, these, these are old trees. I can't imagine what would have happened if they blew this way. They would crush the garage. They would just crush it. And then that tree across the street, I cannot believe it's still standing. That could potentially come over and hit the house a little bit. It could definitely take out that front fence. And part of that uh, tree, and I'm talking about the tree that's all the way across the street there. Part of that tree fell years ago and took out the house that's in between the two houses that are across the street from us. There used to be a house there, but the limb took it out. So, might as well come over here and take a look because eventually it's going to be a thing. Man, that tree was rotted at its base. We'll get pictures of that, but man, you get over here and you can see why this tree, look at this, this is a hole. It's all rotted out, that whole thing. I know it doesn't come on camera very well, but you can see how moist it is here. So as I walk around a little bit more, um, 
the property line is right about here, right about where these trees are. Or where the, not this tree, but the, this other tree is. Yeah, it's right about here, because you can see if, if you go straight here, it goes right across our property to the little corner of our fence behind our garage. And if you go this way, you can see there's a tree line here that looks like people have not messed with. You know, because the trees neither on their property or the you know neighbor's not property. It's so this is this is the property line from what I can tell. And if you get right where this area is cleaned out here, this is where our fence should go. Our fence should carry on all along here to right about this spot, right about where that bowl is, that bowl that's covered up with leaves that's about where the property line is so you can see how much you know how far our fence was forward of that and then how far they bent the fence because this is this is a line that goes all the way up to the front of our fence so it should the fence should have came all the way to here like i said back to there and then over to there if we stayed on the property line or just off the property line so we're gonna have to think about maybe getting that tree taken care of also uh, I think this is gonna run into some money that's all right it's all for the betterment of the home and the property but yeah this this thing was destined to fall apart all the buildings line up basically with this area in here so if you carry along you can see the the property line where it probably is or should be. I mean, it, it could be that the property line goes back as far as this for this lot. But, yeah, this is uh, one of those things that give, it's going to give us something to do this summer, that's for sure. So sad. So sad.